Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Kenneth Bolito, also known as a Techite, and this week was a pretty big week in tech. First, we got CES, then we got some Apple rumor mills going on. Specifically, we got rumors of the iPhone 5, or the next generation of the iPhone, and the iPad 2, or the next generation of the iPad. Now, I'm not going to edit this video because of the sake of just releasing this before some people. So, I'm, if this is a little long, please bear with me. But yeah, so we're going to go ahead and start with the iPhone 5. And basically, you'll see an annotation on your screen, basically linking you to the video where this guy strips down the iPhone 5 and shows you the, the differences and similarities between the next generation iPhone and the iPhone 4. Now, I don't know the legitimacy of this video, so... I'm going to say that this is still a rumor, I'm not going to confirm it yet, but this video is suggesting that the next release of the iPhone is a minor one, similar to what happened with the iPhone 3G and the iPhone 3GS. Now he's also claiming that it is the Verizon iPhone or could be the Verizon iPhone, but we're not totally sure on that either. And the things that he showed us basically was stuff that he thought would address the antenna issues that the iPhone 4 supposedly has. So that's really that for the iPhone 5 or the next generation iPhone, iPhone 4S maybe, but that's really that. There's no other details on that. Now we're going to go ahead on to the iPad 2 and Engadget broke a story late uh, yesterday night and when they were going on their run at CES, they stumbled upon an iPad 2 case with a mock-up of the iPad 2. And by definition, a mock-up is really just a non-working or non-functioning version of the actual product. However, they're not really sure if this is the next generation iPad. It just supposedly is, and it's a third-party company that is making uh, cases for it. Now, if this were to be true, the new iPad would be slimmer, have a bigger speaker on the bottom, and would feature a rear-facing camera. And that's all we know so far if this rumor turns out to be true. So that's really it for the iPad 2. There's really nothing on specs or anything like that. It was just a case and basically some of the new features of it. So we're going to go ahead into the CES announcements now, and I'm going to just do this randomly. I'm not going to do this in any chronological order or anything. And the first announcement comes from NVIDIA. It's Project Denver, and essentially what they're doing is making CPUs and processors. And this is kind of different because AMD and Intel have been the forerunners in making processors. So this is going to be pretty interesting. Now, they are going to be making high-performance ARM core processors, which essentially is like an iPhone processor or processors that you see in smartphones today on steroids. And essentially they just want to put this on computers now, which is pretty cool. And to add on to that, Microsoft will be adding ARM support to the next version of Windows. So essentially we'll be getting more types of computers coming in for the Windows platform, which is pretty cool. The next line of announcements comes from Vizio, and Vizio is coming in hard this year with two Android devices for a start, and essentially they're going to have a Vizio tablet, which is going to be running Android. We don't know the version yet, but it is running a 1 gigahertz plus processor. It's going to be priced aggressively against competitors like the iPad and the Galaxy Tab, which is going to be pretty cool. Hopefully they price it around the $300 to $400 range. I don't really know, but that's my wish. It's going to have a front-facing camera. The screen is a uh, 1024 by 768 pixel uh, resolution screen, and it is around 8 inches. Now, there is a front-facing camera, and the really cool feature that I love about this is that it has an IR blaster at the top of the device, so you can use that device as a universal remote, not just for Vizio products, but for other devices like TVs, maybe you could use it on your Mac if you want, or your, your uh, home theater PC or something like that. That's the one thing that's really cool about it. 
In addition to the tablet, we also have the Vizio phone, which has a rear and front facing camera. The rear camera is 8 megapixels, and the front features a VGA camera as well as a 4 inch screen that has an 854 by 480 screen resolution. Now, the processor is also 1 gigahertz plus, and we're not sure, just like the tablet, who is making the processor or the other internals inside it. It does feature 4 gigs of internal storage and it features a micro USB port, HDMI port, micro SD port and it even features the same IR blaster that the tablet has so you can use that as a universal remote too. Now in terms of the tablet and the phone pricing we have no idea on the pricing yet but as for the release it's gonna come out in the summer or quarter two in the fiscal year. So to wrap up Vizio's announcements is actually a group of apps that they're going to be adding on to the internet apps already on their TVs. And they're going to be adding apps like OnLive, Skype, Vimeo, Hulu Plus, and Blockbuster On Demand. But the most appealing of all of them is probably OnLive. And I can't really go into detail on that too much. But if you don't know what OnLive is, it's basically like the instant streaming on Netflix, but for video games. And if that appeals you, I suggest you go YouTube it, Google it, whatever, because it's a really cool thing to check out. Now, AT&T has a whole line of announcements coming from their CES press conference. And the first is actually something that's really crucial in taking their networks to the next level, and that is 4G. They're going to be doing 4G by means of HSPA Plus and LTE. So basically, they're going the route that T-Mobile has, as well as the route that Verizon has in terms of 4G. And what's really cool is that they're going to be releasing 20 4G devices this year, which is really cool. And in addition, they're going to be releasing 11 Android devices. Three of those devices will be running on the 4G network. However, for those of you guys that don't consider HSPA Plus a 4G network, all three of the Android devices that will be running on AT&T's so-called 4G network will be running on HSPA Plus, not the LTE. So you won't be getting the full 4G experience until they release more phones for LTE. Just briefly going over each of the three Android phones that will be running on AT&T's 4G network. The first one is the Atrix 4G from Motorola, and that features a dual-core processor as well as 1 gigabytes of RAM, and is actually advertised as one of the fastest smartphones ever. The next phone is the Infuse 4G from Samsung, and it features a 4.5, yes, 4.5-inch Super AMOLED Plus display, which basically has a larger pixel density as well as better contrast and better performance in the daylight. And the last phone is the HTC Inspire 4G, and that phone is pretty much just to compete with the other carriers' HTC phones with Sense on them. Now, LG is coming in strong with three entries into the smartphone game this year. And the first one is the Optimus 2X, which is the world's first dual-core smartphone. And they did tease it at the press conference at CES playing full 1080p video. Next one is the Optimus Black, and it does feature their new Nova display, which essentially is more energy efficient and uses less battery power. And in addition to that, it is 0.36 inches thin, and it is 3.8 ounces light, which is pretty cool. Their third phone wasn't announced today, rather it's slated to be announced tomorrow at Verizon's press conference, and it is called the LG Revolution, which is supposed to bring LTE to Android. Another really cool product that was announced today at CES was Samsung 9 series laptops. And essentially, these laptops are a competitor to the 13-inch MacBook Air. And it is actually being advertised as the thinnest and lightest 13-inch notebook available. Now, this thing actually features a Core i5 in it. So this thing, I believe, will definitely blow the 13-inch MacBook Air out of the water. So that's definitely something to look forward to. 
The next announcement doesn't really come straight from the CES floor, rather it actually comes from the Android developers YouTube channel and essentially it teases Google's Android 3.0 Honeycomb OS and essentially they are hinting that it is a tablet only OS and you can see that video in the annotation on your screen. Now this last announcement is really cool and it comes from Texas Instruments and basically it is that they have some DLP Pico HD chipsets out and that a few Pico projectors that, are, that will be at CES will have these chips in them. And why this is interesting is because Pico projectors are really really small and the fact that you can have a projector in your pocket is really cool. Now imagine having a pocket projector that projects HD video. That is really, really cool. And supposedly it has a projection size of up to a hundred inches. So imagine having a hundred inch projector the size of your pocket shooting HD picture at your wall. That is really cool and I cannot wait to see some video of that. And when I do, I'll be sure to put some annotations on your screen linking you to that. Obviously CES is such a large event and there they obviously host a lot of press releases and unveilings so it could be really hard to catch up on all of that news and also even make a video on it. And you can see with my video that I didn't even go into too much detail on these products. So if you want to find out more on the products that were in this video released in CES or even just the products that were not really released just like being shown off and stuff like that or even just want to follow the news at CES, I suggest you guys go check out web blogs like Engadget, Gizmodo, Slash Gear, you know, websites like that, you know, just to get a good fill-in on what's going on at CES, because these videos that I make are really brief, and I can't really go into too much detail on that stuff for the sake of time. So that's really it. I'm Kenneth Bolito, also known as the Techite. Please rate, subscribe, and comment. I'll probably be making another CES video tomorrow because there's a whole lot of press conferences happening tomorrow as well. So please look out for that. I'm Kenneth Bolito. Again, thanks for watching. Signing off. I'll see you guys later.